Good morning and welcome, all of you. It's so great to see you all here. It's such a great group of people, which is good, uh, really good, because the issues are not easy that we're going to be talking about over the next couple of days. Assessing foundation effectiveness, assessing foundation performance, as Stephen has been discussing, is brutally hard. Uh, and it's vitally important. And it's vitally important because foundations are so important. Foundations, as we all know, but really need to remember, play a role other actors in our society just can't or just won't. Remember, with all their vast resources, if business or government could solve all our social problems, we wouldn't have any social problems, and you all would be somewhere else today. So foundation effectiveness, foundation performance, it really matters. And assessing foundation performance really matters. You know, the notion that foundation should be strategic, should be effective, people talk about it as if this is a new idea. It's not a new idea. It's certainly not CEP's idea. You know, Carnegie and Rockefeller, they, they cared about assessing effectiveness. Uh, Assessing foundation performance. I'm just going to need help getting the images on the screen for me. Carnegie and Rockefeller cared. Um, I had a nice little picture of these. Just imagine. <laughs> yeah, there they are. Those old guys, they cared uh, about the effectiveness of their philanthropy. And the reality is that over the 100 years since the creation of the mega foundation, uh, data-driven, feedback-seeking, Strategic foundations have made important, lasting contributions. And I won't regale you with the good examples that we all know and we can all cite. But I'll tell you that it's going on today, too, every day. Foundations like Wilberforce in the Pacific Northwest working to protect natural habitats for wildlife. Foundations like Haas Jr. fighting to protect and expand rights for immigrants and gays and lesbians. <laughs> Foundations like the Energy Foundation doing groundbreaking work to decrease pollution in China without constraining economic growth. So these are just a few of, of many examples of foundations that are making a difference. These three I mentioned because we profiled them because they did particularly well on an important dimension in our grantee survey, understanding of the fields in which they work, and they are harnessing that understanding to really make a difference. But we all know that even though we can point to many compelling examples of foundations making an impact, there is far too much ineffective philanthropy. Foundations funding programs that don't work or are having the opposite of the intended effect. Foundations operating in such a way in which it isn't even possible to know whether they're successful or not because they haven't been clear enough about their goals and strategies in the first place. So we know there are compelling examples of foundation impact, excellent foundation performance. And we know there are way too many examples of ineffective philanthropy, and that's why assessment is so important, to understand how are we doing. You're not going to get the perfect answer, but you need data to inform your thinking. A decade ago, CEP got some initial funding to do some work on this issue, try to understand how were CEOs approaching the challenge of foundation performance assessment. What were they doing? What was frustrating them? And what role might CEP play to help? What we, found, what we found was really pretty sobering. Foundation leaders were frustrated about their ability to answer the question, how are we doing? The data that was accessed uh, tended to be that which was most easily accessible, that which was uh, comparative, quantifiable. Administrative cost ratios, investment performance, 
Important information, yes, but not information that tells you all that much about your programmatic effectiveness. And then when we talked about, well, how do you understand your programmatic effectiveness? Of course, folks tended to depend on evaluation. And evaluations can be very helpful and important. But what we found is that they typically spoke to the success of a grant or maybe a cluster of grants. And that foundation leaders had a harder, harder time understanding, well, what does it mean about the overall performance of the foundation? There was also the challenge of the fact that most evaluation was backward looking and didn't necessarily provide data that could inform thinking about what do we do now. Uh, more, as Mike Balin on our board has put it, of an autopsy than a checkup on a living patient. Now, the good news here is that we did tap into a lot of interest in pushing on this issue further. But there was a recognition of just how hard it is. It is harder to assess in philanthropy than it is in other domains. Foundations are a step re removed from the issues they're trying to affect. There are no natural feedback loops. You've got to go out and get them. As much as people talk about concepts like social return on investment, there are no common units of measurement. You increase graduation rates by 10% in Boston. I save three rainforests in Brazil. We can spend the rest of our life in dueling calculations about who had more impact. Aggregation across different areas of work is so hard. And that assumes that we can get around the causality conundrum. What is the relationship between what was funded and what happened? And then there's the issue of time. You're working on issues that take years, often decades, to address, and yet you need timely indicators to make decisions as you manage. But as I said, there was support for the notion of working harder on this issue, and there were many foundation leaders who were doing so. But there was also great skepticism. I'll share with you an email that I keep around as a reminder of the kind of skepticism that we experience. Now, the first line of this email, this was familiar. You can read it. I got this many times. <laughs> Gotten it many times since. But the next line was, was really pretty amazing. Um, particularly given that this was from a program officer of one of the largest foundations in the world. It appears that there is a fundamental disagreement internally about whether philanthropy as a field or domain can or should be evaluated, measured, and or assessed in any form. <laughs> that was brutal. <laughs> and, and there were moments, you know, uh, and Phil Giudice and, and Kevin Boldick certainly remember those moments because they were there, where we thought, you know, is there even really enough energy around this issue? Yes, there are, there are leaders working really hard on this issue, but then there's also this, you know. And, um, and, and now, you know, here we are uh, 10 years later, uh, and the question is, well, what's going on now? Has anything really changed? What are the attitudes and practices of foundation leaders with respect to assessment? Look, I was clear that assessment's not a new concept, right? Uh, we, we can go back 100 years and talk about what Carnegie and Rockefeller and Russell Sage did to try to understand the results of their work, but at the same time, you know, a lot has changed in the last decade. Think of the organizations that either didn't exist or were just getting started 10 years ago. And so the question is, well, so what's going on with respect to performance assessment? Uh, what are the attitudes and practices today? Has there been progress over the last decade? I think it's too important a question not to try to, try to look and answer it because foundation performance is too important. And if foundation performance is important, then assessment of foundation performance is important. So that's why I'm really excited to be able to share with you not all the answers, uh, but maybe some of the answers to what's going on today with respect to foundation performance assessment. And Ellie Buteau is going to describe what we learned when we surveyed foundation CEOs on that question earlier this year. Thank you. <laughs>
January of this year, we sent surveys to the 537 CEOs of foundations giving $5 million or more annually in grants. 173 CEOs responded for a 32% response rate. And at CEP, we wondered to what extent was there a response bias here, and who decided to respond and who didn't. When it comes to data about the asset size and giving of foundations from which CEOs did and did not respond, we really don't see a difference. But when it comes to the attitudes that CEOs have towards assessment, and what foundations are actually doing to assess their effectiveness, we believe there's some degree of bias here, as evidenced by this one email we received from a CEO to whom we'd sent the survey. She wrote, Dear Phil, usually I'm pretty good at doing these affinity group surveys, but I got halfway through and it was seriously raising my anxiety about all the things we aren't doing to evaluate our work in a systematic way. Then I closed the window and went back to my other work. Sorry. <laughs> But what did we learn from the almost 200 CEOs of some of the largest foundations in the country? We learned that CEOs believe assessing the effectiveness of their foundation's performance is a high priority. They believe a lot has been accomplished in the last decade, but still there's a lot of work to be done. We asked CEOs, among the many priorities you have as a CEO, how much of a priority is assessing the foundation's effectiveness. 72% say it's a high priority. And we asked CEOs to explain to us why they place assessing effectiveness where they do in their list of priorities. One CEO who rated effectiveness as a high priority said, without understanding our effectiveness, we're rudderless. and We learn nothing from our efforts except perhaps that our spending is appreciated. One CEO who rated assessment as a low priority at the foundation said, following up to measure impact or effectiveness of a grant is a fool's game. Compared to where foundations were a decade ago, the majority of CEOs do believe that foundations have made great progress in being able to assess their effectiveness. And still, the majority of CEOs also believe that today too few foundations understand their overall performance. Not everything that CEOs shared with them this, us in this survey was positive when it comes to the topic of performance assessment. Some of the greatest contributions that foundations have made in the past 100 years, they've made because they've taken risks on innovative ideas. And we asked CEOs whether or not they agree with the statement there's a tension between foundations focusing more on assessment and the freedom they have to take risks on innovative ideas. 58% of CEOs agree that that tension exists in foundations' work. A recent initiative that's brought this tension to the forefront is the Social Innovation Fund created by the Obama administration. And the Social Innovation Fund is focusing simultaneously on the importance of evidence and data in philanthropy, as well as on the support of innovative ideas. And the Social Innovation Fund has also been clear that one of its goals is to influence practice in philanthropy broadly. We asked CEOs whether they believe the Social Innovation Fund has the potential to have an important positive influence on foundation practices. 38% said they were too unfamiliar with the Social Innovation Fund to respond, and only 18% agreed. Another topic of conversation these past few years has been whether foundations are focusing too much on data when it comes to decision making and should be placing more emphasis instead on intuition. So we asked CEOs whether or not they believe foundation staff are relying too much on data and should be placing more emphasis on intuition. Only 19% agree. So when it comes to the attitudes that CEOs have about assessment, it's clear from this data that CEOs believe assessing the effectiveness of their foundation's performance is important. But what are they doing to understand their effectiveness? Our methodology this time around is a little bit different than it was 10 years ago when we first started studying this topic. But our conclusion is that today, 
foundations are using a broader range of information to understand their effectiveness. When it comes to understanding operations and finances, we asked CEOs whether they were using any of 13 different types of information to understand their operations and finances. Almost every foundation is looking at investment performance and administrative costs. Just over half are looking at indicators of the success of their communication efforts. The kind of information that foundations were least likely to be looking at to understand the effectiveness of their operations is data about the people working at the foundation. The diversity of staff, staff retention rates, and the experiences of staff working at particular foundations. What about when it comes to understanding the effectiveness of their programmatic work? Again, we asked CEOs if they're looking at any of 13 different types of information to understand the effectiveness of their programmatic work. On average, CEOs told us their foundation is looking at seven different types of information to understand programmatic work. Almost every foundation is looking at anecdotal feedback, written reports from grantees, and information from site visits. Almost every foundation in our survey told us that they're looking at information from evaluations, either evaluations of individual grants, clusters of grants, or evaluations of program areas. And half of foundations looking at evaluations are spending more than 2% of their annual grant-making budget on evaluations. So it's clear that evaluation remains an important component of foundations understanding the effectiveness of their programmatic work. But foundations are looking beyond evaluations to understand the effectiveness of programmatic work. A majority are also looking at other information from grantees, experiences grantees are having with the foundation through surveys, focus groups, and convenings. They're looking at numbers served by grantees and outputs. But the kind of information that foundations are least likely to turn to to understand the effectiveness of their programmatic work is information from their ultimate beneficiaries, those the foundation is ultimately trying to have an impact on through their work. And when we look more closely at this data, we notice two important differences between foundations that are listening to the experiences of beneficiaries and those that aren't. Foundations that are collecting information from their beneficiaries rated themselves as having a better understanding of how their strategies are actually working than foundations not collecting information from their ultimate beneficiaries. And foundations collecting beneficiary information also rated themselves as having a more accurate understanding of the impact they're actually having through their work than foundations not listening to feedback from beneficiaries. So foundations, on average, are collecting quite a bit of information to understand their operations, their finances, and their programmatic work. But a key question that we had in this piece of research was, well, to what extent are foundations rolling up this information across operations, finances, and programmatic work into an overall foundation performance assessment? So we asked CEOs, does the foundation regularly combine information about effectiveness into an overall performance assessment? 48% of CEOs said yes, their foundation looks at an overall performance assessment. And foundations looking at an overall assessment differ from those that aren't in a couple of ways. First, foundations looking at an overall performance assessment are collecting more types of information to understand their effectiveness than foundations not looking at an overall assessment. And the foundations looking at an overall assessment also told us that the information they're collecting about their operations is more useful to them in actually understanding the effectiveness of their operations. Second, foundations looking at an overall performance assessment also rate themselves as having a better understanding of how their strategies are working than foundations not looking at an overall performance assessment. So we learned from this data that CEOs believe assessing the effectiveness of their foundation's performance is important. And on average, foundations are collecting quite a bit of information to understand their effectiveness. But what about 
challenges that foundations are facing in this work. Phil mentioned a number of them in his remarks. There's an additional challenge that's come through in a number of research projects that we've done at CEP. We've heard on a few occasions from CEOs that they would like their boards to be more involved in the work of performance assessment. And in our research, we hear the same thing from boards. They want to be more involved in the work of performance assessment. And the same story emerged in this data. But this time, we also have a little bit more insight into some of what might be getting in the way of that involvement. Only 27% of CEOs told us that neither they nor the board wants more involvement in assessing the foundation's performance. But 51% of CEOs said that both they and their board want the board to be more involved in assessing the foundation's performance, 51%. Another 19% said they want the board to be more involved than they believe the board wants to be. And I'll share with you the three most common reasons that came through in our survey about why boards aren't more involved in the work of assessment. First, the board not having a deep enough understanding of the issue areas in which the foundation funds. Second, the board's expectations for what can be understood about impact don't align with what staff believes is realistically possible to capture. And when I'm talking about involvement here, I'm not talking about involvement just for the sake of involving the board. Because CEOs who listed these two reasons as getting in the way of board involvement also rated their boards as having a less accurate understanding of the impact the foundation is actually having in the communities and fields in which the foundation is working than CEOs who didn't list these two reasons as getting in the way of board involvement. The third most common reason why boards aren't more involved in assessment is the board not supporting allocating the necessary resources that a useful assessment requires. So what did we learn from this latest data? We learned that CEOs believe assessing the effectiveness of their foundation's performance is a high priority, that a lot of progress has been made in the last decade, but still there's a lot to be done. We learned that foundations are using a broader range of information sources to understand their effectiveness today than they were about 10 years ago. And we learned the continuing challenge that foundations face about how to best involve their boards in the important work of performance assessment. So that's some of what we learned, and of course, there's a still a lot we don't know. One of the big issues that we continue to examine is to what extent is all of this information being used by foundations to make changes in how they do their work? And to what extent are those changes then leading to increased impact in the work foundations are trying to do? But the story here is a positive one, because foundations Institutions that many in society say are slow to change or will never change are, in fact, changing. Thank you. <laughs>